Hey, Dustin Vanoy here. In the past, I did a video on how we take our logs from Azure Databricks and get them into Log Analytics. In this video, I'm going to show you how we take Azure Synapse Apache Spark and get the logs from there into Log Analytics. Uh, it's a lot simpler than it is with Azure Databricks to get it configured. I'll walk you through just really quick how do we create a Log Analytics environment? How do we take those values that we get from there and get them set up in the Spark configuration so that Synapse knows where to send those logs? And then we'll do a little bit of querying and even uh, creating our own custom logger and producing a few messages from PySpark. So hang with me and we'll get through this pretty quickly and you'll know how to do this in your own environment. Let's dive in. Let's go ahead and create a Log Analytics workspace real quick. And I will skip through as much of this as I can and just pop in some values here. I talk about this in the video I did in the past about Azure Databricks. You could always go back and watch that if uh, it feels like I go too quick for you. So from the resource, I'll need the workspace ID, which does show up here in the overview screen, but I also need a, a secret. And so the secret will be if you go to agents management and use Windows or Linux, it uh, shouldn't matter which one you choose. I can grab the workspace ID and one of these keys and put those in my uh, configuration file. So here's where you'll get the workspace ID. Uh, let me grab my key and go create something in Key Vault with that value. You could also paste this into the configuration. It'll be slightly different than what I'll show. I really recommend putting in Key Vault, which is why I always show this in my videos. I kind of make you do it this way if you're gonna follow along. Okay, so we've put that key into Key Vault, and now we can go and set up the configuration we'll need within Synapse. So ultimately what we'll need to do is upload a Spark configuration that has these values assigned. Let me show you what that configuration looks like. So here's the configuration that I'll end up uploading to my Spark pool that I wanna set this up for. And I could actually upload this to all of my Spark pools and have them right to the same place, that's perfectly fine. So there's a few things I need to replace here. And actually in this case, I used a, a different secret key than I normally would, and so I'll replace that as well. So uh, first I need to get grab that workspace ID that came with my Log Analytics workspace. Then I need to use my Key Vault name and my Key Vault link service name. So I always in Synapse have set up a link service Key Vault. It's not required, but it's probably what you'll end up needing to do. And so I just kind of assume you'll have one. So to fill in the Key Vault information, I can go to my link services, find whichever Key Vault I'm using and will want to put this value in. I can capture the Key Vault name from there. And then my link service name is going to be what shows up right in this screen, which is demo KV. So I can replace that uh, key vault name. I can replace my link service name as well. And then finally, I need to set the correct uh, secret name. And so I actually switched it up this time. Normally I just go with that, but instead I'm using uh, this name this time. So once I have that, I'll go ahead and save it of course, and then I'll be able to upload that to Synapse. From the Synapse screen, I'll go to manage Apache Spark Pools, find the pool that I expect to use, do the action button right here and choose Apache Spark configuration. From here, I can choose upload and now I just need to locate where on my machine I save that file. Okay, I've jumped to that location and I'll go ahead and upload. Once that's done, I'll go and start up a notebook that is attached to this uh, pool and I should be in good shape from there. In this case, I didn't have an already running session, so I don't have to worry too much about whether or not my session's going before I, I set this up. Uh, if you had a session going, you may wanna stop it and start a new one. That's usually what I would do just to be sure. So the notebook I wanna work with, I need to choose the pool. I did Python custom, and I've already put in some of this code so that we are ready to go. So this is the code that will actually let me um, uh, grab the log4j library and call the log manager and add my own logger. My own logger is named data kickstart in this case. So you don't actually have to do this in order to start getting some of those spark logs and metrics sent over. The default uh, log4j activity that's happening that you can also see in monitoring here will go directly to log analytics even if you don't do this custom log setup. But I think you're probably going to want to uh, create some of your own log messages that also go there. That's at least the case I always see. So once I, let's go ahead and start up this notebook now, I think that my cluster, my pool is ready for this change. 
and I'm going to grab my log and then I'll go ahead and log just a simple test message as soon as it's ready. While we're waiting for that, let me go show you uh, what Log Analytics Workspace looks like right now. So from my workspace resource, I can go to logs, Let's collapse some of this and we'll see um, kind of the default setup here. So the default setup is I have nothing. <laughs> my log analytics is completely empty. And so once these logs start to populate, we'll see a few custom logs show up and that's where I can start to query my Spark information. So I'm not an expert in exactly how this all works, but I do know that if you go look in the logs, you'll see information about the Python, uh, PySpark logging that has been set up. And right around there, you should see a message that indicates it has set up your log analytics workspace. And so that's a sign that it, it should have worked. And from there, it's a matter of just waiting, especially that first time, waiting a little bit of time until it shows up as, as a table in your log analytics workspace. Once that initial table shows up, my experience is that, you know, if you give it, you know, five, 10 seconds, maybe sometimes a little more, your logs will flow pretty quickly. Um, but that first setup usually takes a little bit longer, maybe minutes. Uh, it's hard for me to really say what takes so long to get it to show up the first time. Okay, so after we refresh and come back in, we now do have these custom log tables. And so it took, for me, it took a couple minutes, I think. I'm not sure if I did that exactly right, but after a couple minutes, I can come in, double click on the table and start to query my logs. So what we see is every type of log that's part of uh, the log4j uh, setup. And within that, I can start to do some querying. And so I have, other videos about how do I use KQL to query logs and I try to go a little more in depth, but just as a basic example, let's do a project of the logger name and the message. And usually time generate generated needs to be in there too. So we'll throw that at the front because that's where I always expect to see it. Autocomplete sometimes works, there we go. So now if I run this, I've just kind of narrowed down the list of values. It's a little easier for me to see. And I could apply a filter that says where logger name contains. Uh, what was my terminology? I think I used my typical data kickstart, which is my uh, training series stuff. I always name data kickstart. So once we apply that project and that filter, I'm down to just the bare minimum info I care about for the custom logging that I'm doing. Let's go ahead and send another message that's JSON and take a quick look at parsing JSON just so that you know that that's available for you. And now we can actually run some JSON logs. And so if we were to do this, usually we have this actually wrapped in a library and maybe I'll, sh I'll show more about how we recommend doing this in the future. But as a simple example, if I create a Python dictionary with a set of um, keys and values, so message, notebook, source, data, destination data are my keys and then the values are on the right. I can do uh, logger.info and then json.dump string. So that's going to convert my dictionary to a string and basically send a JSON string to my logger as the message instead of a plain string that's a little bit harder to parse. So now if I go over to log analytics, I've um, got mostly the same query that I, I used to start with to just look at my custom logs here. Now I can go and uh, say for the things that are JSON, let's do a little bit more with this. So what we'll do is we'll set some sort of column name. We'll just say J for now equal to parse JSON message. We've got, we've got an extra column J now. N next thing we can do is extend it to add some additional columns. It's kind of like a with column in Spark for those that, uh, that do know Spark and that's why you're here. So I can do something like source equals whatever my field was, J dot source data. And let's say notebook equals j.notebook and then we should probably have message set so message equals j.message so now i have those added to my query when i run it i'll see that it has actually separated those out as their own values and it's really easy for me to then filter on these things um, see them very clearly without having to read through the whole string and try and visually understand what's going on so that's just kind of the quick taste of <laughs> parsing json and the power you have by kind of overloading that message field with some JSON. And then you would just probably need to wrap this in some kind of function to make it a little cleaner if you're going to do this all over the place. And that's pretty much how we've done it on one of the projects I'm on. 
So there's our walkthrough of how we set up log analytics, how we get it configured so that our Spark pool within Azure Synapse will produce messages to it, how we get our own custom logger within PySpark and do log info messages, both uh, plain text or with JSON that will then parse with a little bit more complex KQL on the log analytics side. Hopefully that was helpful. Definitely drop some messages if you have additional questions on this and I'll see you next time.